Hello and welcome to the lecture for chapter one, which kind of gives an overview about what managerial accounting is and talks a little bit about cost systems and the accountant's role in an organization and then the evolution of management accounting. So decision making and control, kind of the title of this uh, uh, course and the title of our textbook. So to be a manager in any organization, a not for profit, a for profit business or a government entity, uh, any of you that have been in management positions know that it's constant decision making. It's uh, do we pay our workers overtime and have them come in on Saturday or do we hire more employees? Uh, do we promote this product line or that product line? Do we accept an offer uh, for, uh, for a lower price on our product or do we refuse the offer? All these different kinds of decisions uh, are based on a manager's expectations about the future, forecasts about what will happen if we do X or if we do Y. And it really boils down to costs and revenues. So, and again, whether it's a for-profit business or not, uh, we're all responsible as managers for the costs that we incur and for the benefits that are derived by the organizations from those activities. So it's the internal accounting system that provides the basis to be able to make those forecasts, to be able to make good decisions. And when I say internal accounting system, I don't just mean debits and credits that stem from transactions. I mean non-accounting information as well, like activity rates or uh, all different kinds of issues. It's really an information system that provides those estimates, not just an accounting system. So a good controller in a company will understand enough about the company and how it functions and how each of the different departments play a role in that company to be able to anticipate what their needs are and generate the information that's going to allow them to make the decisions they have to make prior to being asked. So as an example, if, if a uh, sales manager is trying to decide if we should accept an order at a lower price than our normal price, and they come to you with that question and you're the controller, that can't be when you start gathering cost information. You need to already have a system that produces that information so you can do it in a real time basis. The other part of it, control, uh, sounds like kind of a scary term, controlling people, that sort of thing. And that's not really uh, what they're talking about here. They're talking about really assessing uh, whether or not the organization is on the path uh, that they chose to take to reach their objectives, or if they've strayed from that path, if, we, if they've deviated from the plan, and then we need to make a decision, do we alter the plan or do we take corrective action to bring things back to within plan? So that's what we mean by control function, is measuring uh, where we're at in reality relative to our plan, and then allowing for adjustments to be made. So here's a kind of an overview of different types of accounting. So and you may have gotten a little bit of this in Accounting 501 or in some of your previous courses. So uh, financial accounting is uh, dealing, well, I'll get into more of that in a minute, but it, it, it kind of is Accounting 201. It deals with uh, financial reporting. So how did the company do and communicating that to others? Cost accounting deals with the cost of either the objects the company produces or the services they provide. There's an overlap there with financial accounting because we need to know what the cost of the units are for our inventory so that we can have our balance sheet uh, valued properly and we can record cost of goods sold at the right level. So cost accounting is a necessary component of, man of financial accounting. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is inward looking. It's about making decisions inside the company. And of course, we need to know information about cost accounting to be able to do that as well. And these are all interrelated. So financial accounting has an external focus. So it's about supplying information to investors, creditors, taxing authorities, management as well, but management primarily from the perspective that they need to know how the people that are judging them will view them. OK, it's backward looking, it's historical, it's what happened last quarter, last year, that sort of thing. The reporting is usually done as the whole company rather than some segment of the company. 
And of course, most of you are familiar with generally accepted accounting principles. So the method in which we report our uh, financial uh, performance to external users is guided by those rules. The reason that's done, the reason we follow GAAP, is that there's comparability both between similar companies. Say I'm a loan officer and I'm going to approve a loan to a car dealership. I want to know how they did compare to another car dealership client I have. I should be able to compare their financial statements and I should be comparing apples to apples. It's also important for comparing between time periods. If I want to say how did they do last year and how did they do this year? Well, I need to be able to make a valid comparison that way, and I can't if they've done things completely differently in their reporting last year than they've done this year. So it's also about independent verification. So somebody else should be able to look at your financial statements and say, yeah, those are correct. Managerial accounting, on the other hand, is internally focused, and that's what we'll talk about in this class, is about how to give management the information they need to make good decisions. So it's not bound by rules. There isn't any generally accepted accounting principles or international financial reporting standards of managerial accounting. You do what you need to do to get the answer uh, to the question that you're, you're trying to answer. The focus, rather than on the whole company, is going to be on divisions within the company, product lines, customers. Is a particular demanding customer uh, a profitable customer? Would we be better off without that customer? It's very counterintuitive, but there could be situations, and we'll look at it later in the course, where you could actually reduce your revenue and improve your net income. Okay, So finding opportunities like that is something we would do in managerial accounting. The objective of managerial accounting is to produce useful information for decision making. And the way it works in any organization, if you make good decisions, good things flow from that. You become more profitable, you grow, people get raises, you get bonuses, all of that kind of stuff. If you make bad decisions, uh, then products don't do well, you generate reduced revenues, you generate losses, there are layoffs, bad things. So uh, it's about measuring performance and providing feedback so that management can, uh, can move on. So every organization, of course, is different. Um, but here's a, an example of an organizational chart. And, and you can see here that there are different divisions that all report to the president uh, CEO, uh, who ultimately reports to the board of directors. They're the ultimate boss in the company, the owners. Uh, but we've got operating divisions, which actually make the products or supply services, HR, which is a staff position which supports the other, other uh, departments. We've got the financial area, legal, and then other. And of course, different companies could have marketing or uh, information technology, things like that. So within the financial area, the primary person that does management accounting is the controller. So the controller reports to the CFO in most cases. Uh, I've been in companies where there wasn't a CFO and the controller reported to the president. So every company could be different. And they're responsible for both internal and external uh, accounting. So both collecting financial information and reporting financial information uh, accurately. And when I say internal and external, I want to be really be careful. It's not two separate sets of books. It's not two different results. It's the same books, the same transactions, the same results, but arranged in a way to tell a different story to offer uh, insight in a different way. They're also responsible for budget planning, and they kind of act as an internal consultant within the business. So looking forward, the evolution of management accounting, the flow is kind of like this. The business environment, that's the industry that you operate within, uh, the economic uh, conditions in which you operate. Those things are going to influence the strategy your business chooses. So once your business chooses a particular strategy, whether it's um, expanding product lines, acquiring competitors, uh, expanding into different markets, whatever the strategy is, uh, that's going to result in an organizational architecture. Decision right assignment, that's who makes what decisions in the organization about achieving that strategy. Performance evaluation is about did they do what they say they were going to do, and then a reward system if they do that, 
Do they get bonuses? Do they get raises? Do they get promoted? All of those things. So the accounting function really deals with that organizational architecture, measuring those things. So that leads to incentives and actions like the growth of the company and uh, financial benefits, that sort of thing. And, and if everything works correctly, that should result in the firm value increasing, uh, which in some cases that in the case of a for profit company, that might mean a higher share price, which pleases owners. If it's a not for profit, then it's a more stable, uh, sustainable organization. So one brief example of something that a managerial accountant would do is uh, here we've received uh, a request to buy product from us that normally we charge customers five dollars and somebody wants to buy it at four dollars uh, and we can look at what our cost of sales is under both cases and this is a, a, a strict comparison what if we don't take the order which is current what if we take the order which is the middle column there and then we look at the incremental difference in this case, there is an incremental profit of, of taking this extra 2,000 units uh, of $2,060, so it's a good idea to accept the order. We'll get into this in much more detail in the next chapter, but I just wanted to give you a taste of that. So this first chapter is a bit brief, so the lecture is a bit brief, uh, so I will look forward to talking to you in the Chapter 2 lecture. Thank you.